Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Pregame from the Pun, Madison Mallard Pregame Show. Derek Brizanine alongside Alec Dopp. And Alec, tough one for the Mallards last night. Yeah, definitely, Derek, uh, as you mentioned, 14-5 uh, to 5 loss for the Mallards last night in Kenosha. A uh, tough place to play for anyone, especially uh, for a Mallard club that's kind of struggled at Simmons Field this year. But uh, we've dominated them at home, kind of, so it evens out a little bit. But uh, it was a tough one for sure last night. Yeah, very interesting series here between the Mallards and Kingfish, like you mentioned. Neither team is one on the road, but at home, they've both been successful. And as we look forward, I know it's still a little ways out, but the playoffs, if they face each other, that home field advantage is going to be huge if neither one can win on the road. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that really speaks to you know how important home field advantage is in the Northwoods League. I mean, uh, playing in front of the home fans always gets you going and all that, all that good stuff. But I mean, it might seem early, to, a little bit early to talk about home field advantage, especially in the playoffs, but I mean, we're coming down to the end of the season already, and uh, we're starting to see how much of a factor that can really play. And as we continue on in the season here and progress, we continue to see changes in that starting rotation for the Mallards. Last night, Guy came back in the starting rotation that hadn't been there for a few weeks, and Nick Gruner and just wasn't quite his night there. No, that's it, you know to be honest, it's been a tough stretch for Mallard starting pitching. Uh, I mean, they, they they pitched incredibly well in the month of June, and last night Nick Gruner lasted 2.2 innings, gave up a couple runs, uh, wasn't able to command the ball the best uh, for the Mallards last night. Uh, yeah, he coming out of the bullpen, it was uh, it was a different transition for him. I think uh, it might be tough, especially against a great lineup like Kenosha has. It's got to be tough to kind of change your approach, you could say, I guess, against that kind of a lineup. But uh, yeah, Nick Gruner not his best start, but uh, you move forward to the next day. And Nick wasn't even supposed to start last night. The guy that was supposed to start last night was Matt Bauer. But Matt, big congratulations to him on the next step he's taken in his baseball career. Yeah, signing with the Houston Astros, uh, obviously well-deserved uh, for him. Uh, Washington State, the left-handed pitcher, uh, great stuff. It's going to be a tough uh, you know, hole to fill for the Mallards Club, to be sure. Um, but I think we get a chance these next few games to see uh, what the Mallards can do and how Donnie Scott can kind of piece together that starting rotation. It's going to be interesting. And that bullpen last night, they're usually the one key point you can always count on. Last night, even they struggled, so you know it was a rough night. Yeah, um, three different bullpen guys came in and pitched. Uh, Jesse Kay gave up a couple, a uh, handful of runs. Uh, you know, he's showing flashes of potential for sure this year, Jesse Kay, but uh, last night, not his best night. and. Uh, Vince Arobio gave up a couple runs. I mean, he's been lights out the last month. I mean, hasn't given up a run. I think he had a stretch of 15 or so innings coming into the last night without a run allowed. So uh, it just wasn't our night last night. That's all you can really say. Got the chance to bounce back here tonight and this weekend as we go into four games in just three days. And I know that's going to be a lot on the guys, but everybody's going to have to step up, pitch in, and play a part here. Yeah, definitely. This is a big uh a big set. I mean, this is a struggling uh, Battle Creek club, but uh, you know, sometimes, as they say, uh, the clubs that are you know down in the dirt, you could say, are sometimes the most dangerous. They got nothing to lose, so uh, it's going to be a big, a big two-game set here before Lakeshore comes in on Monday for that doubleheader. So uh, it's going to be uh, interesting. That's lacrosse coming in there on yeah. Monday, and we we only got one game in against them there in the first half at the very end, and that doubleheader that we played at lacrosse so we haven't really got to see much of that series unfold yet so that'll be interesting first time both these teams are coming to the duck pond so first chance for us to see what they have and actually battle creek bringing back a former mallard here and fred Mankey. yeah he's i guess he uh signed on with uh, the bombers after we released him so uh guy from minnesota he's been added to their bullpen uh yeah, I didn't get a much, much, much of a chance for us to pitch him early in the season, so uh, it'll be uh, nice to see how he's progressed. I guess you could say. It's always fun to see the guys uh, <clears throat> develop throughout the year. You know, at the beginning of the year, you see kind of some just a variety of talent. You don't really know what to expect, and then the guys kind of come into their own throughout the year and make a name for themselves, and that's that's fun to see from my perspective. I think it's fun for everyone, to be honest. I mean, uh, these guys come from, you know, all corners of the country, even mm -hmm. the world sometimes. I know Battle Creek has a couple of players um, from Taiwan, I believe, mm -hmm. over there. So, I mean, you can only imagine how tough of a transition it is for them. 
much less uh, you know some guys just coming from Minnesota State or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's always fun to see the guys mesh and kind of you know just get uh, comfortable with their situations. You could say so. And while they're trying to get comfortable, this Mallard's team they have such explosive bats and they have so many of them that it's tough to get them all in each night. And you've seen Donnie Scott try a variety of different options here and there to get as many bats in as possible. And big example of that, Gene Ramirez, primarily a catcher. He kept, caught and was DH all the way up until last week when he played game at third base. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we have a, a lot of depth at the catcher position on the Mallards roster. Uh, and, you know, it's been a thing where we've been struggling to get runs, uh, you know, relative to how the season started. We started off extremely hot. Uh, we've cooled down since then, but, uh, you know, the, the depth at catcher has really forced Donnie Scott to kind of figure out how to mix in, you know, Colin Thoreau, who's had a huge season for us power-wise, uh, put him at DH or left field even sometimes. But uh, and other guys like Scott Tyler coming around, he's playing. He'll Hopefully he'll be in the lineup tonight. Uh, he's been slugging over 500 this year, over 100 at-bats, so, you know, he's legit. Um, and, you know, just Jason Goldstein behind plate offering that veteran presence, you could say. So it's been it's been a tough kind of a juggling a juggling kind of uh, task for uh, Donnie with the lineup, but uh, it's been well. Uh, it's it's a good problem to have, you could say. Oh, it's definitely a problem that you'd love to have, kind of like Urban Meyer there at Ohio State with his quarterback situation. And that's a great problem to have when you have more bats and you have spots because then in those late innings, you can sub them in for a pinch hit here or there, and it's just never ending. It's taxing on the other pitchers. Yeah, and those, those late uh, at-bats are arguably the most important at bats of the whole game. I mean, you oftentimes when you have that guy coming in and pinch hit, you got runners at scoring position or something like that. So um, it's a lot of versatility in the lineup for Donnie. And uh, I mean, the way he's handled it so far, I'd, I'd say it's pretty it's pretty good considering, you know, the stats and the numbers some of these guys have, you know, kind of compiled this year. And tonight, as we look forward to the game, Nate Hoffman's on the mound. Nate's one of my favorite guys to watch out there because it's just, to me, it's just such a pure pitching game that there's nothing, you know, no sparks, bells and whistles. It's just good, strong pitching. Yeah, definitely. And you know, he had a probably his rough, his roughest start of the year last time out on July 5th in in Alexandria, allowing those nine runs in just a couple, couple innings. Uh, but uh, you're exactly right, Derek. I mean, he doesn't feature anything noteworthy from a from a pitching standpoint as far as stuff. But, uh, you know, he just gets the job done, and he's real consistent with the zone, down in the zone, getting ground ball outs. Um, he, he's going to work the, He's gonna work, uh, work ahead in the count and, uh, you know, hopefully produce that weak, that weak contact for the guys to, you know, uh, you know, keep guys off base. That's what I like about him is that he's going to make them hit the ball. He's not going to give them anything easy. He's going to make them work to put the ball in play. He's going to let defense do the job. Yeah, in the last season with the Mallards, uh, Hoffman, you know, that's something, an area he's kind of struggled with. He had about as many walks as he did strikeouts. And this year, his strikeout to walk ratio is about, uh, you know, two and a half, which is which is pretty good for the Northwoods League, to be honest. So uh, it's been nice to see him coming around and, you know, doing those things we kind of just mentioned really well. Well, hopefully he has a big night. Mallards have a big night. Enjoy the game, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. <laughs>